Hello Scorpio, thank you for joining us. This is Rosemary coming to you from Ansara Angels Ave. This angel scope is for both Scorpio Sun and Scorpio Moon. These are your November 2014 Christian Angel answers from your Christian Angel Barchiel who resides over fixed water. Scorpio leaves October behind wondering about the early trimmings of Jack Frost, Dasher, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Blitzen, Donner, and Rudolph, whom Santa Claus uses when he needs him. And boy, does he ever need him this month. Taking full advantage of the ascendancy of the glamour of the beaver moon on the 6th of the month of November. Now, we get uh, a lot of messages and uh, on you know uh, via the phone and via email and on YouTube and various other formats. But we had a, a subscriber from YouTube who asked a question, and uh, this was someone who had entered the Angel Answer contest but had not actually won. But when they asked. Uh, reasonable questions uh, you know that, that seem reasonable to us we, we go you know that aren't just you know silly or weird or whatever but if they're nice questions we, we are happy to uh, go over them here so you can send some of those in um, and we'll be happy to go over them for you now uh, Fantui775 asks why is my girlfriend always saying that I don't do what I say I'm going to do. Uh, I work hard for both of us. Uh, okay, this is uh, the answer to that question. The answer to that question is simply that all people do things towards their own purpose, towards the own purpose of their own uh, physical DNA and uh, spiritual DNA, which is spiritual DNA is nothing but astrology. So everybody does that. Everybody follows their own purpose because an apple seed goes into an apple tree and a you know lemon seed goes into a lemon tree. So people are, are very much automatons and slaves to their uh, physical makeup, their you know their chemical, the, the chemicals and, and hormones are swarming around in their brain. You know, everybody has has a different set of uh, you know chemistry and and hormones in their body. Now, people all work very hard towards the purpose that their again spiritual and physical genetics have set them to. No matter what they think they're doing with their brain and their heart, their genetics are sending them in the same direction that was the purpose with which they came here. So when people are working hard for, for two people, that's true, but everybody's ultimately working for themselves. Everybody. Everybody, even if they think they're doing it for somebody else. Because they cannot see past their own five senses, unless of course they develop an additional sense of things that's more aimed at uh, heaven, that's more aimed at, uh, some people call it Christ consciousness, some people call it Krishna, some people call it Christ, everybody has a different name for it, but unless it's aimed towards that, you really can't do anything for anybody but yourself because you're unable to even, you, you don't have the sensors to even know how to do anything for anybody else. You can't even see what anybody else really needs. So, you know, your girlfriend may want to get married. You're, you know, because that's going to make her feel better and more secure. Also, uh, a lot of times people, we kind of diss other people when we say, yeah, yeah, I heard, yeah, yeah, I'll do that, I'll get right on that, and we don't even really do it. So, if you want 
her, your girlfriend to take you seriously, then you need to do the things you say you're going to do for her. If you're working, say, say you're working at a, some, on a shop or something, and your girlfriend wants you to fix the faucet in the, in the bathroom or something. And you say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll fix that. But, it, you know, but you go to work and you ignore that. And you don't fix the faucet. So then she says, well, you know, she's going to get somebody else to fix the faucet. Or, or she says, uh, she'll fix the faucet. You say, no, no, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then you just keep working. And, and you say, well, I'm working so hard. But you're not doing what she asked you specifically to do. And when she says she'll do it or she has somebody else to do it, then you say, no, no, I'll do it. Because you want to. But you don't have time, and then you just let it go. You, you just forget about it. You kind of blank it out because you're focused on your work. So that's why that's happening. So you either need to let her do it, or you need to let her get somebody else to do it, or you need to do it. You need to do it. Okay, let's answer that question. Now, so we're talking about beavers moon on the 6th of the month of November. It's the beaver moon. Now, busy little beavers are building their dams up in the extreme regions which, with much expectancy of the frigid wintry snow. And this is a time when Native Americans, true to their autumn rituals, set beaver traps in the 11th month marked by the Latin word revealing the true secret number of this month of November, which is nine. Because it's the eleventh month, but no it, it, it means nine, like novena, it means nine, like octa in October means ten. So there's two number, there's a two number discrepancy. Just like in Yakum and Boaz, just like, uh, you know, it, it, there's, it, it's like a, we have the metric system, and we have this system based on 10, a system based on 12. This is established, it's an established pattern into this reality matrix. And you can go visit uh, Brian Camila's, uh, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, Kemala Camila's uh, Illuminati Matrix.org, I believe, uh, website to see a lot of information about that. It's very important information. So, this is the dual system that we have. Uh, like he mentions, it's like the Romeo and Juliet story, which causes ever seeking because there can be no life without this constant seeking. So, now, secrets abound and unfold with the scorpion forever seeking, which is correct, 9 or 11 for this month. So what we do is we say, but what's the truth? Is it 9 or is it 11? Well, if you ever land on the truth and everything's ratcheted down there, then really you can have no life in this dimension because there can be no movement without movement. So they have to say, well, this is true and that's true too. And then in trying to figure out how that's true, you know, we're trying to figure out how that's true. It's seeking. That's a seek. That's a seeker. You seek. How is that true? And then the mind, when you create a Mobius strip, and that keeps this reality matrix going. It's kind of an automatic pilot, sort of. You know, sort of. So one needs to get beyond that at one point. So that's what that's about. Now, the, the scorpion's mind, this one, is going to ever seek between the two numbers and the double mind of the bicameral universe where the essence of the soul resides within the black hole of time. This information cannot be lost no matter what Hawking says on the matter and is ever spewed from a circulating swarming luminous light temporarily chained within the depths of darkness at the center of the galaxy. The center of the universe is where is found the true God, who is the prime consciousness and prime light. We are all shards sprung from when the world soul was shattered. And this universe, well, there's a lot of mathematics there, but in the center of the galaxy, there's, there's one 
through the Yadhi Volta into the center of the universe as the Isi. Yadhi Shin Volta Isi. That's why they call Jesus Christ the King Universe. That's why. That's it. That's the answer. Okay. Continuing with Bart Shield's transmission. As we bring this world soul back together again, we become God again. Not in ourselves, but rather in our relationship to each other. Our communion. Our common miracles bestowing ever gifting from a limitless light. Let there be light fiat lux. There is found the light in the barren womb of the stony tomb of Lilith. Talking about the season of Mabon, we're talking about this Thanksgiving season where the turkey is killed. This is pardon, of course. Okay. Um, it happens in death. The spark of resurrection happens. It happens at the nexus between one and the other. It happens between the silence and the sound. Here is found the light in the barren womb of the stony tomb of Lilith. Here is the spark of the light formed cleanly and sternly into an entire new being. Now is the time for capturing beavers in sturdy traps before the wetlands freeze over. After all, Scorpio, we must get our winter furs supplied before the freeze sets into the bark of the potent, austere trees, yearning to be chopped down for Christmas festivities. Prime Creator exalts the planet Mercury in November, and the Scorpion will feel the effects of Gemini the Twins and Virgo the Virgin, influencing your mental capabilities over the birth of the Sun from the house of Libra, bearing its seed and bringing to fruition the 13th runestone seed Iwas within your house Scorpio. The rune of Iwas brings the luck of the princess trapped in the castle of the king for the making of golden thread from simple straw. This luck penetrates the portal of the green sun of Brill, remembering the Yagdrasil seed of the world tree genetic code showing the force of unity. The force of the unity of life and death held in the clutches of the sharpened claws of Lilith. Those sure of eye and hand, Land's arrow shot from bow into the very throat of the game bore where sights are lovingly set, for we must love our victim if we are to imprison it for our sacrificial Mabon feast. Even in a desolate, frozen wasteland, the brawny and quick can hunt and bring to final intention any game, allowing family and kin to feast the delight of the eighth runestone seed of Wunger, where the scorpion's happiness is again found in great numbers and overwhelming crops. Love matters become tranquil for those not prepared with fully stocked bounty for relatives, lovers, and friends alike. The spirit of sharing and sharing alike in November are unwitting victims of second guessing due to the aforementioned exaltation of the planet Mercury giving rise to logic over desire and fairness over choice. Would-be lovers and saviors are seeking much advice in November from those who can see clearly through the storm finding a way through and out of dreadful circumstance and disapproving situations. Luck is made available by the gods and the mighty Zeus releases Poseidon from his watery dungeon, bidding Hades to release the bulls of the house of Taurus, cleansed by the fires of seven months past. The mighty seed of the runestone, Behu, races forward and charges the scorpion, 
in a frenzied stampede of like-minded species. Opportunity is knocking, and there is always a way through the storm clouds brewing. They're brewing steadily from the horrors of war and the promise of grandeur. There's always a way through this stormy cloud of the prospect of war. You can call it World War Z, World War IV, World War III, whatever you like. You can call it, uh, you know, the various uh, battles and, and wars in the Bible. There's, you know, the war of Ezekiel and, you know, the war, you know, talking about again. There's all these different wars. World War Three and World War Four are not Armageddon. Just saying. But they're very important. Opportunity is knocking, and there is always a way through the storm clouds uh, from the horrors of war and the promise of grandeur. Now, continuing, November is a good time to remember that although money can buy the paraphernalia of love, it cannot buy the thing in and of itself. For that is attained with deed and cooperation, buttressed by much friendship, camaraderie, and eons of time. The Scorpion may think that it is essential to have choice of lovers always and evermore, as most people do, leading to much freedom and pleasure. You'll find quite the contrary to be true, nevertheless, Scorpio. If true love is what you need, then you must make the choice you know will bring you just that. All things are born of their class. So whatever you are choosing will bring you exactly that choice, nothing more and nothing less. People are what they are, and although some wiggle room is found in all life when exposed to enough light, systems are set into place very early on in life, as you well know, Scorpio. Money matters prove to be in disarray in November, Scorpio. The Scorpion is just overturned this month when it comes to cash and economic matters. Business as usual is always preferable. But new ideas and new ways of doing things undermine the will of those who want things the way they used to be. It's a brave new world, however, where justice and compassion find their way back into the grand scheme of things. And that's a good thing. It's no longer a world run by the enablers, but is a new form of the old world where the where an eye costs an eye, and a tooth costs a tooth, for all beings. There is no longer a need to sacrifice the innocent. The new eon, which is now the age of Aquarius, now it firmly it, it's in place, and it calls in the sacrifice of the guilty. For why should the innocent lambs, like Jesus, be sacrificed? Why should not Judas Iscariot be held responsible instead for his deceitfulness and duplicity. They say no one says life is fair. But Scorpio begs to differ. Life should be fair and it will be if I have anything to say about it. Over the ages, human persons have tried to make some sense of things. They have attempted to overstand each other's behavioral attitudes, modifying the patterns to the end of commerce devoid of care. So in other words, human persons say they want love, when it comes right down to it, follow the money. It's always the money. All of the creatures in the universe, or universe, created by the prime exaltrix in cooperation with the prime exalter are prone to the irrational behavior of love which, of course, has no logic put to it. We all know that. To try to, well, just to say, to try to figure out love logically is quite silly because there's nothing logical about love. There's nothing logical about hormones. You know, the, the body uh, goes through whatever it needs to go through. It, it, it tries to attain status. It tries to attain better genetics, better status, better situation, always. Climbing up the ladder, climbing up Jacob's ladder, not noticing that there are also angels walking down Jacob's ladder in order to reach down a hand and help up. 
So don't assume that fallen angels or these, these what you call demons are uh, beings that are attempting to harm you in some way. They're trying to come down and, and show you the way to be an angel, trying to pull you up. And the ones that come down to help are, are put in very bad positions. Like they, they have games where the first person who does something nice is the person we hurt, you know, because nobody likes nice people. Nobody likes, because nice means stupid. Well, this is true. But in the age of Aquarius, that's going to be turned around. And nice people, I don't know if the word nice is the correct word, but compassionate individuals, but who do the right thing with integrity and don't let people walk on them, but still do what is right, but don't let people walk on them. So do what is right, but don't let people uh, steal from them. Keep their integrity. If you don't keep your integrity, it's going to make you sick. And you can bet your bottom dollar that if somebody's telling you there's something wrong with you, that's exactly when you're doing something right. And when they tell you you're doing something right, that's exactly when you're doing something wrong. But it's very complicated. But most of the time, you know, other people aren't really there to help you. They're there to cover you up and push you down so that you'll look, you know, less vibrant and they can reproduce and you can't. So be careful of those who are so helpful and friendly. As that um, old song used to say, uh, I think by the undisputed truth, be careful of the handshake and hide the snake. Can you dig it? Okay. Okay, so remember, love has no logic put to it. It's the survival instinct. Most of the time, it's trying to hurt you, if not all the time. The head wants to figure it out, sense danger, means good, intentions. The heart, all full of love. The survival chakras want to reproduce at the expense of everything else. Wants to survive at the expense of everything else. Watch that movie, The Life of Pi. P.I.? Really watch it and listen to what they say at the very end and you'll get it. Okay, rather, this behavior, it's an overrun plagued by pathological symptoms of ludicrous gropings and the vain attempt to reach a higher state of mind as well as body, which is pretty much what we just said. This is coming from Barchell, but you understand I'm trying to translate angelic script into something you can all understand. You know, the amorphous bodies that are, that are um, not changeable, sort of like Samyaza in the Book of Enoch are unwilling and unable to reach states of abundant altars due to their inability to congeal into the alchemical wedding of spirit and matter. When those who do business are lucid, that word lucid is very important, and clear intention, complete cohesiveness between you and your money, yourself and your business, your intention and your reality become one and the same when the scorpion's work is in constant similitude with the martial aspects of a fierce mind. Read the works of J.J. Hurtel. It, it really brings that through, that light. The fervent, unstoppable will meets the immovable object of trade and barter, carving out a piece of mind stuff in a cookie-cutter fashion that is just the right size and shape for your vessel of intention to bring you the most perfect and delightful answer to your dream, Scorpio. This brings us to the runestone seed of Soilo, that again is going in the exact opposite direction you would normally have it proceed. This is due to a couldn't care less milieu plus observation equals I knew it equation used by the scorpion to study the behavior of all creatures, then employing a subsequent attempt to absorb the proverbial bullet so that both the strength of the scorpion and those loved and cared for are safe. They say that the scorpion, uh, scorpion is uh, the most powerful sign of the zodiac, and so I create this, yes, and that uh, 
according to uh, Mr. Astro Theology. Uh, can't think of his name at the moment, but I, I'll, I'll think of it and give him a shout out later. But he's very important. But anyway, Mr. Astro Theology on YouTube, he uh, had mentioned that Scorpio, you know, they say it's like the part where the sun must decrease and Scorpio must increase. And so if people say that Scorpio is doing something like they have a stinger, the reason Scorpio is doing that is because they're trying to protect, and they're very good at protecting those they care for and those they care about, which, you know, whatever they've created. Their children, of course, a child commanding can be a, some kind of business or it can, you know, whatever. It can be a child or a business or, what, you know, whatever you create. So, uh, Scorpios are very, very good at that. Okay, now, this is quite necessary to forego any conclusions that the will here discussed is in any way malleable to anything other than planetary influences set in constant motion by the higher powers of prime creatrix and prime creator who exist in the shadow of the prime exalter and the prime exaltress. Tricks. Exalt tricks. What does this mean? It means that, are we talking about predetermination? Yes. Quite frankly, we're talking about predetermination. Nobody really has any free will. Except, there is an exception. And according to Anthony Kozinak from Kabbalah Info, he said that where a, con a, a sentient being makes its determination is when that sentient being decides that they are going to who they're going to hang around with and what books they're going to read, what they're going to fill their mind with. That that is where freedom resides. It, it resides in your environment. The books you read, because those books you read, they're seeds you put into your mind. Any kind of book is simply information. What, what, what is a seed? It's information inside a coding. This is a coding, and, and, and this is information inside the coding, right? Any book, any spiritual book you utilize. This is the, the seed. This is the information. This is the coding. It's a sperm. It goes into your brain, which is the egg. And you give birth to something. That, that's what that is. And that's how, uh, for example, Jesus Christ or Krishna would bring someone to a different state. Uh, I don't really know much about uh, Hinduism. I studied it a little bit. Excuse me, I have my doodlings here. But anyway, you know, this, this is the cover. And... This is the information within. Uh, some, you know, there, in all teachings, you know, there, there's different states you can go to. You can be held back or not, up to you. Okay. Now, we're going to go into health matters. Oh, and that goes right into, um, one thing that, that the Vedic uh, teachings are good at is health. Very health. Okay, health matters are exhilarating, if not shaky, for the scorpion in November. The rune stone seed, number one, of Fay, who rushes towards the allocation of newfound freedom bestowed from the reserves of biotech. Biotech. Ready for those who would grab the holographic ring of transhumanism. If Virgin America Airlines can fly the upper echelons to the moon and beyond, and they do, then why not give those who remain on planet a new toy such as holographic entertainment? By the same token, physicians can now begin to rival nature by mimicking her so well. Those in need of true healing of body and brain can gain just that. Miracles can be attained by simple unrelenting faith in divine providence or it can be gotten by the provisions of the mind of man. 
Humans have come to Earth to combine the DNA of Cain and Abel to deliver a new faith and religion to humankind where both consciousness called soul, consciousness called soul, and purpose called spirit is found infused inseparably into matter granting immortality to those who desire and merit such a state of being. So although a soul can be destroyed, the purpose cannot. Because if 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 the purpose belongs to the the, the supreme creator or exalter, as long as it's the highest, the most high, the will to bestow with no sense of self, so that it I have no sense of self, it doesn't exist, but it created existence and non existence, we're at that point. This is the point where if that seed has been planted in you through these various books like the Zohar and all that, that once this is done, then you are resurrected. That's what being saved by Jesus Christ means. That's what that means. And you can't undo it. And you wouldn't want to, and you, you don't want to, and you can't. Because that's the purpose of of the Most High. That is not the purpose of some other thing. Of some lesser thing. That's why I build your treasures in heaven, not on earth. You can spread your seed all over the earth. That can be wiped out. You destroy the seed, you destroy the tree. You cannot wipe out the seed of the Most High. That's the point. The Scorpio will find that the entire month of November is very exciting. Very exciting indeed. So, this is a result of new passion, Scorpio, and going for it. So go for it. Continue to go for it. If you're tired, just keep going. And uh, quite frankly, don't listen to people so much because normally and usually they're not really telling you the truth. They're, you know, Okay, enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday seasonal dinners and events, Scorpio. Lately, is just too personally engaged to attend to. So enjoy your, your personal relationships. They're very important to you. Enjoy them. Enjoy them. Also, though, enjoy the turkey, mashed potatoes, and cranberry sauce. And don't forget the pumpkin pie for your health, vitality, vim, and vigor. Be wise. Be well be all you are meant to be Scorpio. Your divine tone of I create adds much to the fun of the Thanksgiving season in November. Thank you for joining us Scorpio. Join us again next month.